we are extremely delighted um, to um, to welcome um, Anders Hallengren back to the Anglo-Swedish Society. We've had uh, Anders is, is a member, a life member, no, no less. I can plug that as a membership category. Um, and um, we got to know each other um, at Mansion House, I think, and, and, and arranged the wonderful uh, opening to a conference that that um, that he was um, very much involved in organizing and, and in charge of, uh, which was the Carl B Bernard Wadström um, mm -hmm. summary. Um, it's got the longest name of any conference I've ever attended. And it's the uh, for the abolition of slavery. Give me the full title. The Carl Bernard Wadström Conference of Human Rights and the Abolition of Slavery. And this is, um, I think, about 10 years ago now, almost. Yes. And it was a very successful um, opening evening and, and conference, actually, at, at Mansion House. Um, and the Lord Mayor Locum, uh, Sir Roger Gifford, gave a good uh, talk, obviously, uh, the Swedish ambassador. And so we, were, we remember that very fondly. Um, I'm going to just allow you um, the floor and, and not um, delay you any further. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, British and foreign citizens, good evening. This is a book about the world and the seven seas. Look here. And forgive me for being personal. I don't know whether you ever consider what is left to be done before you die. During the pandemic, I found ample reasons for doing so, no such self-searching. While I was writing obituaries and obituary poems for deceased friends overseas, People called me up from various countries. It appeared that old directories and address books were used and old acquaintances were renewed and regenerated. One day I also received a, a surprise call from a commissioning editor of the World Scientific Publishing in Singapore asking me for a new book. And then I thought about uh, which manuscripts are, uh, uh, there is some uh, difficulty here. I see Sam Osman only, but okay. Then I consider which manuscript are left to be done before, before it's too late. And it became this book, Ocean Bound Women, Sisters Sailing Around the World in the 1880s, about their adventures, the ship they sailed with, and the, and the people they met with on many different nations. And what kind of book did it become? A member of the Swedish Academy wrote to me after having read the book that it's a strange synthesis of an adventure novel, a family chronicle, maritime history, and a spiritual document. And I would add, it's a documentary and a confession of young girls. My old supervisors at Harvard University, Harry Levin and Daniel Aaron, both born in 1912, used to ask me when they looked into my youthful writings, what is this really all about? And this I'm about to tell you now. 
as far as I can. And uh, another thing I would like to tell you, it's about its sources. This is not a book based upon other books, but uh, upon handwritten manuscripts stored with me and inherited for from old relatives. And the starting point of this book was actually in 1979, when I first received this uh, travel diary uh, yeah. in my hands and promised old relatives, grandsons yeah. of the diarist to write a book about it. Well, some of my books have been slow fruits, but uh, now I found that this has to be written and finished before it's too late. It's, uh, I, I, I don't know how family archives are created. I can only tell you my story. At uh, the, the winding up of estates of deceased relatives and their distribution, it it happened that some people uh, asked that perhaps Anders, per chance, should have some inheritance too. And I said, I take care of all papers and you take care of the rest. And also I take care of all old books. And for that reason, my collections have grown to enormous proportions. And uh, I cannot recommend this uh, collecting to anyone, uh, although I think that uh, it's a good idea not to dispose of anything, in particular uh, let letters and old family documents. Yeah, they have to be stored somewhere. Anyway, this is the basis of my writings. And uh, to give an idea of uh, what this book is all about then. It's, uh, it's about two motherless sisters who, who took on a ship in their teens and sailed around the world. It's about their forebears and their descendants and all the people they met with. And it's very difficult where to place such a book in the bookshops. What genre does it belong to? If you, if you put a book in the, the feel-good section, you have to put another one in the feel-bad section as well. To, it's very tempting for me to, to quote the bibliographic keywords used used by libraries. It's about women sailors, Washington State, Polynesia, orphans, the JFL fleet, shipbuilding, the age of sail, HMS bounty, mutineers, the Pitkin Islands, the Russian Navy, Melbourne, 19th century, Oceania, Australia, geography, nautical charts, epidemics, hurricanes, globalization, migration, culture studies, ethnology, ecology, zoology, oceanography, navigation and shipping, social sciences, reforms, social classes, shipwrecks, forestry, wood industry, Native Americans, cannibalism, aborigines, indigenous populations. And I assure you, it's, in reality, it's much more. Perhaps I, I didn't learn the lesson from my supervisors at Harvard. All in all, it's about my grandmother and my sister and their father, the true begetter of this book and of me. I would like 
I, I wish I could I wish I could address you in person and shake your hands and uh, give my, you my personal greetings. Uh, and I, I would like to share more than the screen with you. But uh, I, I will try to do that now to comment upon some pictures to to illustrate this presentation. This is the book, and part of the book is based upon a diary written by a Scandinavian wo woman. And uh, it's a special feature of the book because this is the first account of a travel around the world written by a Swedish woman, and hitherto unpublished and unknown. And uh, the, the publisher has offered the English Swedish Society and other viewers uh, in different parts of the world an, a, a discount of 20% if the book is ordered from their homepage using a promo code noted here, WS Ocean 20. Back to the sources. What is this? It's a uh, it's just an item, a storage place, an old truck. But what, what is its meaning? What does it signify? Things carry traces of those who once owned them. The past on person's pockets emptied of contents and the contour of, of a personality is sensed. In the trunk of heirlooms, fleeting life stories are glimpsed, lives without equivalent. What do you choose to take with you when you have to leave everything? What does the fugitive bring? What passes from one life to another and retains its meaning? In every human being's life, there are stages of crisis and breakup, parting and arrival without return. The one who feels reborn and finds a new haven or heaven does not leave everything behind. It, in what one carries is found a mirror of identity. In its light, we, survivors, can vaguely see a person's image. As I are in this case of a huge collection of documents, photographs and memorabilia, stored in two old chests. Together with comprehensive genealogical and research material collected and saved by descendants and passed on to me, I found, find myself as the mouthpiece and spokesperson on earth of the dead and dumb on the other side of the grave in the long chain uniting us in the arc from ashes to ashes all holding on to the old same anchor cable. A central document and a main feature is this is the diary. This is the opening page which begins Anteckningar under Sjöresan notes during the sea voyage. On Saturday, the November 7th, in 1885, we set off upon our long journey. Due to our late departure at an advanced stage of the season, we had expected a lot of gales and storms, but we were immensely relieved and delighted by the extraordinarily glorious weather conditions as we set off. We took this as a good, good omen. Well, the moment was fraught with expectations, uneasiness and emotions. Departure time, the ship's bell chiming, young and old were in the harbor to say goodbye, neighbors, schoolmates, friends, spouses, children, stevedores, dockers, loafers, idlers, senior citizens, and other interested to watch the formidable ship cast off. But other, others were still busy boarding with goods and baggage and hopes, combined with the delight of being decently employed. On the jetty and the embankment, there was an 
assembly of family members who shared some of these feelings, yet took an opposite view on the other side of the dark water. It was a day of rejoicing and wet handkerchiefs, shouts and acclamations, laughter and tears, smiling as well as inconsolable faces. The ship's bell chimed again. The gangplank was removed in force. The captain roared as a lion to the crowd of youngsters flocking at the Stone Age, rebuking them to keep clear of the quay. The harbor pilot had arrived for the tow, all provisions checked, all loading done. The seamen happy to get away and have an end to the heart-rending leave-taking scene. What a relief. To some, there was a lurking fear of definite parting, an irrevocable departure, a point of no return on both sides of the withdrawn gangway, the now broke, broken connection between the two worlds. It was a deeply affecting moment for all that were thus left alone, not unparalleled, but so often repeated in seaports and railway stations worldwide, a farewell scenery of loss and the onset of endless longing. Enrollment registers of Atlantic and other lists is part of, the, uh, and logbooks are part of the sources for this book. The, uh, quite a unique material, like this one from 1885, the, the, the crew of the Atlantic. And uh, Sherman's Rulla in Sweden, Siemens Roll. As I said, the starting point of this book was in 1979, when I first got the travel diary in my hand and promised old relatives to write a book about it. Yes. And now at old age, I'm busy to keep old promises, not to breach any faith. The story begins with this woman, the mother of the traveling sisters, Maria and Emmy. Amalia Matilda Wienroth, who married Captain Johan Axel Söderström. Her mother, who was a poor maid, had died at 27 in the cooler epidemic of 1853 and was raised at an orphanage. Her brother was sent to a workhouse where the rule was he who does not want to work, he should not eat either. Together with her young daughters, she survived the Jevle city conflagration of 1869, spending the night of July 10th outdoors, sheltered by blankets and a grand piano. This picture shows the daughters, Maria and Emmy, rescued after the fire. Three years later, in 1873, their mother died in tuberculosis, another plague of the time. And the toddlers saw their mother lying in state at church in a ship's coffin manufactured by seamen. Her eyes were closed, but her mouth was open. Their father, Captain Söderström, called the Skipper King, King, by then was in Jamaica with a full rigged ship tour and returned home the following year and only then found that he had become a widower and the children motherless. The postal service by mail boats was, was much worse than today and sometimes slower than the merchantmen. Deceased crewmen not taken by the high seas or buried at sea, accidentally returned home in coffins or caskets with transport vessels 
to shock mothers and widows without prior warning. Not until 1895, the year when Emmy gave birth to her oldest son, the father of this book's author, Marconi invented the wireless telegraph. The first Atlantic cable was laid in 1858, but telegraphists were, were never found in the boats these ancestors carried and rarely in the ports they called at. The technology was limited to a sextant, compass, nautical charts, log, lead plummet, barometer, thermometer, marine chronometer, wind meter, ship clock, hourglass, drawing set in brass with a pair of compasses, draft pin, protractor, and a transversal scale, as well as field glasses, all indispensable on astronomical navigation out in the oceans with no land in sight and especially at night, gearing up and steering with the help of the navigation stars and the nautical almanac, which indicated coordinates, declination, and hourly angle for 58 stars. The, the vessel doing well over five knots per hour of the average and 100 nautical miles round the clock. Emmy, his daughter, Remember the early, that early one morning, she woke up hearing, as in a dream, an anchor change go in a windlass at a berth in the harbor a mile away, and immediately discern that it was daddy coming home at long last. She referred to this occurrence in her early childhood as a clairvoyance of love. He soon returned to the seas, however, while the children were taken care of by the orphanage of their mother and the pioneer Schlander Girls' School in Jevla. He did not pick them up at school until the eighth grade at graduation day, when he found them old enough to go to sea and as apprentices learn some seamanship and foreign languages and customs. His ship, the Atlantic, was then the largest deep sea sailor in the Jevle fleet of merchantmen. In 1876, it became its master mariner. A grand three-masted vessel, which would determine the fate of his family, and not least the life of his daughters, who took on in September of 1885. A magnificent craft of 1,000 metric tons, uh, 187 feet bark, carvel built of Swedish oak and pine wood and copper, which sailed on until 1911, marketing wood products from vast forests in unwooded parts of the earth. Here we see the bark with all square sails and fore and aft rigged mizzen sail set. The efficiency of this sailing merchantman in various weather conditions and winds could be improved by the gaff sails, tri sails, or stay sails, including jibs. But the square sails could also be set at an angle, as we can see. She is carrying, the, uh, this is noteworthy, the Swedish Norwegian Union colors. Swedish and Norway formed a union until 1905. And first of all, the, the four signal flags, the HNGB signal flags, which is the ship's international identification. The, the, the freighter Atlantic here seen at rest in British Harbor in 1879, the Atlantic had collided at Lizard Point with the British brig Anthus, which sank and lost half of its crew. Captain Axel Söderström's elder brother, Carl Gustav, was a sailor who had died in the North Sea in 1856, when that, and when their father, Captain Jonas Reinhold, gave Axel the dead siblings clothes 
he also inherited the career of his forebears and went to sea. Here we see the 1885 crew of the Atlantic photographed upon their arrival to Melbourne in March 1886, including M.A. Söderström, born 1868, 17 years, and Maria Söderström, born 1867, 18 years. As you can see, the personal living in the Stern Castle upper right, captain, chief officer, the daughters and the second mate have had opportunity to compose their features and, address, and dress up to the occasion, whereas the rest of the st staff is still in their regular working clothes and worn after the long trip. Ordinary seamen, able seamen, deckhands, carpenter, cook, sailmaker, steward. Finally, the, th the third female hand, the, ship, the helpful ship sound, Harriet, the St. John's water dog, an ex extinct breed, which is uh, considered the, the ancestor of Labrador and Newfoundland and uh, the ancestors of which, he, according to hearsay, were brought to North America by Vikings. The monthly salary of the employees varied widely, from 50 Swedish crown for Decker Lysander to 70, 70 crown for Chief Officer Elfström, but food and lodging were included with the round-the-clock attendance. Leaving the home port, Chief Officer Elfström's wife and family had waved goodbye. The seaman leaving spouse ashore alone for years, as always. Another married man in the crew were the able seaman Johan Gustav Bergström and the steward and cook Carl Östling, who took leave of their dear ones at the wharf. Boarding complete, Bergström was oldest in the crew of 17 men, born in 1838. Ordinary seaman Knut Axel Boma, the youngest, born in 1869. Thus, they were all between 16 and 47 years old, and the girls not the only teenagers on board. Gustav Theodor Lysander, a low-paid deckhand, was the same age as Emmy. Maria Söderström. An emerging intellectual and polyglot, and the main begetter of this book, she's the diarist. From Pitcairn Island in the Pacific Ocean, she gives an, a comprehensive account of what happened to the mutineers uh, after the mutiny of the bounty and the fate and present where, whereabouts of their descendants. A devoted reader of scripture, she was a pious nonconformist and thought dancing a sin. At a ball with the Imperial Ru Russian Navy in Melbourne, she was asked to dance by the commander of the Russian man of war, Vyestnik, meaning herald of the fleet. No problem. She gave him a polite brush off and started a conversation with him instead concerning the invitation to dance. She forwarded it to her always accommodating sister Emmy, who took every opportunity to have a good time and was a great mixer in all countries. Her, hus her uh, future husband, called, like her father, called her nimble, and said of her that she was quicker to work. In her youth, she was unabashed and a live wire. On the passages from America through New Caledonia and New Guinea to Australia and the roundabout back to the Pacific Line Islands through New Zealand, she had shown herself forward and in the meeting with indigenous people of Oceania who reportedly had earlier been cannibals, asking them which part of the body was tastiest. A straightforward question from a rosy, marriageable European girl, insisting 
on candid and detailed answers. She was invariably met by the retort that this was a cult ceremony of the past and by no means a feast or a meal. But once she received uh, an outspoken reply. I would like to say something about the root. As you can see, they started off from, from Yerle in the Baltic Sea, past uh, uh, the Sound, the Katigats, Kagerak, the British Channel down to South America at Montevideo, and heading straight eastwards by uh, Cape of Good Hope to Australia, where they spent a, lot, a very long time. It, it, become, it became almost a home port. From there, they went to North America, Washington State, and back to Australia and, and uh, by New Zealand to Malden Island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And after a uh, horrible hurricane and leakage, they had, had to take land at uh, Valparaiso, Chile, before they could pass the, the Cape of uh, Horn, the Cape, the Cape Horn, and head northwards through the Atlantic back to, to England, Germany, and Sweden. Australia, in the Dufour map of 1863, sometimes used by the captain for an overview, Passing south of Australia outwards through the Pacific and by northern roundabout homewards was a challenge and called for many stops. The Atlantic tried these routes several times, choosing various alternatives. The Dufour map again. To the crew of the Atlantic, the important Destination Malden Island was in the middle of nowhere. You can see it in the middle of this picture. They were there to load guano or during a an ex very extended stay. While the girls went out fishing with islanders. This, this island, uh, in its time called Independence Island too. Later was destroyed by nuclear bomb tests. This is not uh, insects, but the islands of their source with the depths measured in fathoms. Perilous waters where Sir Deström's ship Tour had foundered where the Atlantic was seriously damaged in a storm. Dangerous rocks, winds, and currents in this area. All adventure stories should have an end. And finally, the, the diarist, the writer of the travel journal, was married to a sea captain she met in Melbourne. The seaman John, Yun, John Jungberg went down on his knee to propose. As it happened, then the gregarious ship's peak, which this nice day in the harbor roamed freely aboard on its regular, took a positive interest in the genuflecting man and poked his snout into the matter and nudged the kneeling man in the back. And in this piquant or spicy, rustic manner set its friendly mark on the romantic scene. The suitor stood his ground, though, and all three were happy. Like other ships, the Atlantic had a pig, pigsty, and the young lady was as familiar with domestic animals on board as her attentive admirer was. Unfortunately, however, she, he was, uh, before long, killed in Cape Town, South Africa. Finally, unlike Maria, her sister Emme settled down in Yevle, 
and gave birth to nine children, one of whom was my father. She played the piano at cinemas, giving voice and mood to silent film. When people were running on the screen, she made them run even faster. When there was romance on the screen, she played with her heart attached to the strings. Now, we arrive at the beginning again. This is the title and a reminder of this uh, discount using the promo code WS Ocean 20 from World Scientific Publishing. Uh, if there is any time left, I will be open for questions. Uh, don't, don't be sh shy asking me because I'm very, very bad at answering questions. Um, and we, we, we do have time. Thank you very much. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Please go ahead. Um, I wasn't too clear about that. Thank you very much. It was a lovely talk and uh, very well presented, and I enjoyed it greatly. Um, but it was one thing that I was a little bit unsure about. Maybe you, you covered it, but... Uh, what exactly did the girls do on board ship? What, the, what were their tasks? I I didn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I did it here. Aha, uh -huh. okay. No, uh, they uh, usually uh, they helped in, in, in uh, the, the cabin and uh, assisted the steward and the cook. They made, did a lot of cleaning. Uh, but there were a, a variety of, of uh, tasks were committed to them. But, you know, long trousers for women were not invented yet. So we're not permitted to enter the rig. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Hmm. Now I, I can I can see everyone. So so raise your hands. Oh oh, if I want to ask a question, I I really just came in at the end. But um, what I heard was very exciting and looking at the map of Australia and the travels around the world and it's a, it's a very um, it's a really exciting adventure. I don't know how they coped with seasickness <laughs> because <laughs> just one trip in a boat for me it makes me feel sick so <laughs> i suppose you get used to it but i don't have any questions because i just came in at the end now did, did, did they write anything about seasickness yes yes uh, they they had uh, they were seasick to to begin with but uh, it, like all seamen uh, so, uh, sooner or later, you get rid of that problem. What's what is happening to? The... I think someone is trying to get in. Okay, and... okay, uh, you're all welcome. But <laughs> you know, you can reach me. I can uh, hear them af afterwards too, because uh, my contact information is no secret. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will circulate it if, 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 if uh, with your permission. Yes, everything. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you, and I and um and we sent out an email as well with the with a link to to purchasing the book. For those those who haven't yet to take yes. advantage of the discount. Yes, and the you can do it by this code thing. Yes, yeah, so you have to input the code at checkout time. I haven't tried it myself because I was um, 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 uh, Anders very kindly sent me a, a, a copy. So I. Um, what did you go into way. Swish or something or? Mm. <laughs> something like that. This is all yeah. So what 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 what's your next project? You 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 you're accelerating. You you said you you're doing all the things that you are that you'd promised yourself and others through the years. 
Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I've been busy with other things during the meantime, I can assure you, but uh, some of my books have been such slow fruits, and this is not the only one. And uh, the, the next one is also based upon memories, but it's my own memories from from my, my years in Spain Holy. during the last years of the Franco regime and uh, my uh, the people i met with and, and in particular my friendship and collaboration with uh, salvador dali the artist mm. so uh, the, that, that will be a, a book in itself uh, on my days with dali which uh, in fact covers many years it's just a memoir so, so, so I, I'm not. Uh, that book is not uh, either uh, based on all the books on reading, but uh, just my my archive, my notebooks, my recordings, my photographs, and all such things. So, I I, I try to now I try to produce uh, uh, just unique, unpublished material. I'm not using the internet, uh, but today. Uh, and and you said this is your first ever um, online talk. Yes, that you've given. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. I, I've I've been a, a showman in a way and uh, performing on stages for a lot part of my life, and I've lectured around the world and in the USA, from Massachusetts, in the East to Hawaii in the West. But, you know, I, I'm just, I try to uh, look into people people's eyes and, and talk to people person to person. So uh, this is very strange to me, but I know this is another effect of the pandemic I mentioned to, to begin with, that we're getting used to this media. But for, I, for us, it was a, a definite um, lifeline, really, to, to carry on doing something and anything. And um, uh, we, we, we have a nice um, effect of being able to connect with, with our friends and, and members in Sweden, sister societies like in Gothenburg and, and, and Stockholm. Um, so, so we're very happy to intersperse the odd zoom it's it's uh it's of course nice to meet in person and uh, we look forward to seeing you in person in, in london in due course um but i think this technology is only getting better and um the cameras are getting slightly better the speakers and you can't you can't um squeeze somebody's hand across the internet but 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 it's better that they're not seeing each other and and it was a very good um uh debut for you thank you very much for your uh for your excellent talk very gripping may, may i add something mm -hmm. i i do believe in the global communications uh, 40 years ago, I wrote, wrote about global common communications, how it will make peace in the world. And I still support uh, people getting in touch uh, uh, all over the world if it uh, brings people together and not apart. And that happens too. I, I'm not sure that social media, Facebook and the like, have, have, have been great uh for, for world harmony actually but um i certainly anglo-swedish society um online talks have been a, a completely positive really um what would happen if we were in the same room is that i would present i would now present you with a let's see if if it's allowed with a tie Yes, I, I will uh, wear it next time. I, I assure you. Uh, no, no, but I, I, it's not that you need to wear a tie. But it's, but this is a. Um, I love a it. Swedish society tie. Do you, do you have one like it already? No, I don't. No, no, no. This, this, this has your name on it, 
uh, and I will keep it safe until next time I see you. Excellent. Looking forward to that. If if I was to send it to you, you'd get stung with a load of um, import duty and, and paperwork, so I don't want to inflict that. Oh, it's my name, Anders Hallengren, Hudiksvallsgatan 3, 11330, Stockholm. Oh, okay, permission to, to, to inflict uh, import duties then. I'll send it as a sample. Excellent. I love it. Mm. But do we have any other um, any other questions or comments? Somebody's um, Caroline is talking, but is muted. You you need to unmute yourself. I can't do it for you, Caroline. Good. Okay. Um, how can I watch the recording of it? Um, with any luck, we will um, edit something um, together in, yeah. in due course. Um, oh, okay. Th these well, things just... take a little time because uh, the chap who does the editing uh, usually... Did we lose our speaker? No. Yes, it's still rude. It's... Oh, well, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yes. yes. No, every, everyone's here. That's good. Um, so for the, the previous ones um, can be accessed via uh, the website. There's a link to our U YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, one or two speakers have, have said that they prefer not uh, for the recording not to be made public. No. But, but today we can do that. But it yes. takes a little bit of editing to get, get all the, um, uh, just to make it more streamlined. Otherwise, um, to, to edit out the the clicking and the interruptions. The interruptions, <laughs> this sort of thing, you know, can everyone see me kind of bit. <laughs> Um, and then we put a nice logo at the front and some some credits at the end. So um, lovely. Oh well, I look forward to that, and I'll mm. look out for it on the website. Yes, we'll we'll let everyone know when it's done. It takes a few weeks generally, because these things have to have to feed through the system. Yes. Um, any any more questions from anyone? We're we're, we're reaching yeah. our hour, but we're not there yet. No. I yeah. I had a question. Again? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I can see the, the virtual hand up. Yes. Um, I was just wondering whether the, the girls went to sea again, or was this their one adventure, or did they return to sea? They both returned to sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, in a, in a way, they were from the sea because mm -hmm. they were born on the sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because their father when he married, brought his wife as passenger on his trip at, and to his stateroom. <laughs> and so, okay. No, he had to work. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating to me how, on the one hand, it's a long time ago, but on the other hand, it, it's, it's not that many, that, you, you know somebody who knew all the people who were there. It's and and how quickly the world has changed, and how quickly we now can get in touch with relatives that live over the other side of the world and actually speak to them uh, and write to them, and more quickly than a a letter. I have a friend here that's a member of the Anglo Swedish Society. She's ninety four. And she still writes letters by hand to certain people because they, her friends are so old that they don't have uh, the ele electronic devices that we use today. So, um, yeah, that's it was quite different when we were young. <laughs> I think the quality of the journal that you showed us is is not easy to find in this day and age because i think if you've got paper which is quite precious that you know quite expensive and and, and pens and so you, th you they, they evidently took some care with their handwriting they sat down they put the, or the the main writer she she put her thoughts in order and then she put them on paper whereas now if we just dash something off to a relative it it might not be structured in the in, in the same way. 
and the autocorrect might step in and spell it incorrectly <laughs> if you're oh. swinging between two languages. I, I, I've certainly been invited to a horse warning one time. <laughs> it was meant to be a house warning. <laughs> horse, a house warning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> horse warning. And, and we're now at the eve of um, the age of artificial intelligence, which is which is bursting upon us very very quickly. So so brave new worlds. Yes, really. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm slowly catching up. <laughs> Don't think I'll get there in the end. Well, it's always moving. Yeah. Um, have you any plans, um, Anders, to, to travel to London? Well, I, I hope to go to London, but I don't know when. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I, I was to Spain recently because I, I have to refresh my memories from from when I was a uh, news agency assistant in in Spain in uh, 1973 to 1975. So so that that's uh, where I'm going mostly. And, uh, and the weather's uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, well, well uh, the, you know the the weather in Catalonia is tricky. And, oh, yeah. uh, the yeah, Tram Tramontana is uh, terrible. Yeah, it's very true. And it's uh, difficult in winter, actually. Mm. But especially in the countryside. Yeah. Very wet and very muddy. Yes, sure. Yeah. Well, there's a whiff of spring in um, in 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 England uh, today. At long last, <laughs> the days are quite um, as long as the nights everywhere. Um, so, which which gives us um, a happy note to end on. Um, I, I'm going to um, just <laughs> applaud our speaker. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, very much enjoyed. Um, yeah. and, and your um, your 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 passion for each subject uh, that you tackle, uh, and and you have much breadth in in your research and in your writing, is um, is inspiring to all of us, and we look forward very much to, to seeing you again, um, hopefully in person. Thank yes, you, thank you, and like all the sea sea seamen, men and women said. Say Lord, that's the Greek. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you again. Inspiring. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next thank month you for our much. events, I hope. See you next time. Thank, thank you. you so much, Alex. Thank, thank you. you. It's very nice to see everyone. Thanks, yeah. thanks for coming. And, and thanks again, um, Anders. Thank you for doing it. It was wonderful. <laughs>